thank again, thank you very much everyone, thank you very much everyone, and thank you again for participating and making time and be together the practice of thank you again. Thank you very much. Again, we're going to restand and reactivate our good beautiful motivation or our beautiful intention, such as joy and appreciation, and then vastness motivation of the Bodhi Jada and pure motivation or the realization and of, uh, of the S Vajrayana teaching or training taught us and, uh, and all the great masters, the teachings are always reminding us those. So please reactivate those and with those beautiful intellectual thought and the kind of, in a way we illuminated and light up and it put, we put the switch on of all our beautiful motivation and with that clear light status we follow the words of the teaching of Buddha Shakyamuni as well as the lineage masters. In this time, we are following the, the teachings and instructions of the great Jabji, the new Rumuchis, his teachings. So again, of course, uh, you all know basically, many of you already know, so I participate in all that. And now again, so I just go over that. And we've been told that we divided, or I divided that into three groups, and beginning novel and the middle novel and the concluding novel or in the Tibet is known as Tambasum. So we kind of put that in that frame. The reason I'm putting that and I mentioned so many times because we like to, our practice becomes so practical and so uh, and progressive and also a practice we like to become as whole part of the practice. A whole whole practices, not just a kind of piece of practices. So we really like to make this call it, call it, as call it, call it practices. And to do the call it practices or some authentic good practices, then in the teaching make these three novels, or three tambasam. Tambasam is so important, and it makes everything then novel, novel, beautiful. And it will elevate ourselves from the impurity or in noble status to the noble status. Yeah. So therefore, this is again very important. In that frame, as we told first, this novel is the motivation. Again, we, told, we said so many times, one after another, and I mentioned those again and again. So first, this is motivation, which is so important. And that motivation or that intention, what we lighted up ourselves, we're going to keep continuing that on our, the principal part of the practice, second motivation or second tamba, we're going to keep. Not just only in the second tamba, we're going to that move to the third tamba at the concluding status. Even though it's a slightly different kind of like highlight as an aspect of the practice as a nobility, but reality is basically the same. We're touching to the, our goal of true nature, our own being, our own nature. That started from the original or beginning status, never diluted, never obscured. That authenticness we like to reveal. So this to, to, to reveal that this this tamba, this three noble is that's the way. That. So now I go over. With the first novel I mentioned already, and there's nothing, I mean, okay, of course, there's many things to say still, but I will go to the second one. Second one is then, in the, according to the Bodhicitta level, it is actualizing Bodhicitta. Actualizing Bodhicitta. And actualizing Bodhicitta, or the, from the motivation, tell all this final company, this Tampa song. If I use another terminology to add the greatest teacher, Buddha highlighted at the very his beginning of the teaching, the Four Noble Truths. Among the Four Noble Truths, this Tampa Song, Three Noble is following the Path Truth. This is Path Truth. Absolutely perfect Path Truth. That is, we are preparing and advancing and moving and developing our pure nature and reversing the old habit pattern that lead us in the samsara. 
from the beginless time. We are reversing or we are transforming. We are transmuting that. Therefore, this is the really so important. This, this path of truth is so important to get enlightenment. Or as Greek's teacher Buddha said, cessation truth. Cessation truth is not going to come by itself. It is going to depend on the cause and conditions. That cessation truth, the cause and conditions, also we are going to make the cause and the conditions according to the result or the cessations. Cessation means what? I think I said many times and you all know. Cessation means something ceased, something finished. What is ceased? Obscuration is ceased. Negativity is ceased. The old habit pattern is ceased. When that ceased, when that finished, what we are revealing? The old and natural. That is enlightenment. Buddhahood. That we are revealing. But that Buddhahood is not just going to come boom as like suddenly going to appear. That light, that Buddhahood begins right when we enter path truth. Right until when we enter, when we pursue the path truth, the illumination, light, it begins right then. And as we continue to pursue, as we continue to keep our courage and commitment, that light becomes brighter and wider, stronger and stronger, and that is known as advancing the light or advancing the path, advancing the boomings. Therefore, the greatest teaching, Buddha Shakyamuni, divided all those our development of the inner, inner, inner realizations are lined up as a five path, ten boomings. This is five part and ten boomings, is not just externally existing. It is advancing. It is, it is developing our realizations. Also, when, when Buddha met, kind of clarified all the so perfectly, beautifully, when we are advancing, each time it will bring more joy, more confidence, more commitment, more loving kindness more compassion, more openness, more simple, more humble, more kind ones, soft heart, all those brings just growing, growing, growing and developing, developing, then expanded beyond any borders, beyond any horizons. That is enlightenment. Until that, the light continue will assure us that inner light, inner progress will continually assure us to path of the joy. Therefore, path bodhicitta, bodhisattva paths are known as path of the joy. From the joy, from the joy, moving to the joy. More joy, more happiness, more peaceful, more courage, more commitment, more openness. More kind of negative emotions are going away, one after another, or it's getting less and less, and that's really how. For that reason, then it devon drawers in it in the teaching said. From the joy to the happiness places, from that place, moving forward to the happiness and joy and the peace force. Advancing. Therefore, those ghost great bodhisattvas are never going to feel laziness and bold by the practices because it brings joy, peace, happiness, fulfilling the wish to benefit for all living beings and fulfilling the wishes of your own self or your purpose. Purpose to one's own self, purpose to other ones. It is what in commonly kind of in West I said, win-win, truly win-win. It is a win-win, win situation, win-win news from when we pursue that. That is really winner. 
truly. This vena is not just for a few months, a few years, in few, this lifetime. This goes on and on. Life after life. Peaceful, peaceful. One after another. Therefore, it is so special. So for that reason, again, I go, now I'm going to talk over the, this actualizing bodhicitta. Actualizing the bodhicitta is a conduct of the bodhisattvas. Once you have the beautiful motivation of the or intention of the wishing bodhicitta, now you begin to activate that. Not just only mental stages, activating through the verbal, through the physical. You begin to activate it. According to your capabilities, according to readiness of others, as I said quite a few times, and with peaceful manner, with polite manner, with courage and commitment, state courage and commitment, state, state fast as a mountain, strong and deep as ocean, open as a sky in the teaching set. That's what we move forward, with humble, simple, calm, and peaceful. We add once. So that the activity of the Bodhisattva is in the teachings, it is numerous, like ocean. It's numerous benefit activities, but all numerous ocean like activity, beneficial activity of the Bodhisattva summarize into these six parameters. But Ganesha, teacher, Buddha, chapter minutes, summarize into these six parameters. Six Paramadas in the Tibetan world is Parut Chimba. And in Sanskrit, it is Paramata. And in English, I think it translated transcendentals. Transcendental wisdoms or transcendentals. What, what means by, in the Tibetan, for example, Parut Chimba? Paro means other shores. Chimba means uh, going or lifting up to the other shows. What other shows? Other show is a show of the beyond the dualities. Or other show is beyond of the nobilities, nobles. That indicating this show where we are is noble, not noble. It's, it's not noble. Where we are is samsara. Samsara, full of chaos, chaotic, full of difficulties and troubles. So from that world, we elevating ourselves to nobility, free from the negative emotions, free from the karma. That is what we mean is parodha, parodha. And the chimpa, actually in the teaching of Paramata, is beyond the conceptions. So that means no attachment, no grasping, no clingings, going through other shows. That is the really meaning of the world meaning of the Paramatas. And there is six Paramatas. And that which is, again, it is, is Paramatas are the practices. It is what we are going to practice or what the Bodhisattva is practicing. Every Paramatha is based upon Bodhicitta. That way again, if I say more clearly, every Paramatha is based upon four boundless. Or in other words, every Paramatha is based upon compassion. Compassion. Or in other words, simple with every Paramatha is based upon good heart. It's good heart. So if I use good heart, so when we do the generosity practice, it's based upon the good heart. Morality is based upon good heart. And the patient is based upon the good heart. And then joyful effort, concentrations, wisdoms, or compassion is absolutely based upon the compassion. That compassion is how much, how big. That you remember, we said, we talk, I mean, not just a bit, we are talking that, Boundless. It's based upon the boundless. 
boundless compassion. So our generous practice is based upon the poor boundless. Our morality is best practice is based upon poor boundless. And so forth, one after another. All is the best upon poor boundless. Or again, to symbol said in the teaching is compassion. That's it. Compassion and wisdom. It's based upon compassion and wisdom of the great emptiness. That is what the really the, this paramatas. Now this paramatas, as you, you all know, I mean, we all know, we all know, we all heard this, this uh, terminology many times, as we know, the six paramatas. As I said, six paramatas are the practices. Practice what we're going to practice. We're going to practice that both in the post meditation and meditation states. It's not just only one time, one sight. We're going to practice this continuation in the both state of the post in and, and, and meditation or practicing states. So therefore, all practice of the great teacher Buddha Shakyamuni summarize into three extraordinary trainings. Three extraordinary trainings. Those are known as Lapasanas. Early a few weeks ago when we were discussing about the Buddha's teaching, the scriptural and the realization or the practices. Scriptures are three basket teachings. And the realization of the practice are three extraordinary trainings. That's what we discuss. So now this time is a practice, so this is a three extraordinary trainings. Or in a Tibet, Lapa Lapa Song. This is that's what the Lapa Lapa. Is. And that is again, of course, you remember that. What are three extraordinary practices or trainings? It's extraordinary training of the moralities. Extraordinary training of the concentrations. Extraordinary training of the wisdoms. Those are the three practices. The entire Buddha teaching is summarized, or teaching of the practice is summarized into these three. That is, doesn't matter what that, whether it is the teachings of the Foundation Buddhist school teachings or the His Holy Dalai Lama often using as a Pali language or Pali based upon the Buddhist teachings and Sanskrit based upon the Buddhist teachings or the Vedayana teachings. All is based upon these three extraordinary training teachings or extraordinary practices. So first is if I use symbol which are the, the moralities and the second is the concentrations. Third is wisdoms. So now, how these six paramatas are summarized into these three extraordinary teachings or, th or practices? First three, first three, what is that? I'm sure you remember. First three is generosity, morality practices, patient practices are ah, first three of the six paramatas. They are, the, if we summarize that into that three practices, they are the morality practices. It is the morality teachings, ethics, morality teachings. And the fifth paramata of the sixth paramata is what? Concentrations. That is the concentration extraordinary practices. That is. Last one of the six is wisdom. That, that is wisdom practices. So now we completed five paramatas into three practices. Then what about the one of that we missing, we said five. One of them, that is joyful effort. Joyful effort support to all of those threes. Joyful effort is the principle Support and the, yeah, support of the morality, joyful effort is principal support of the concentrations, 
or the meditation, joyful effort is the principal support of the Westerns. That's how it is. Three extraordinary practices. This. Then these practices, when you practice of these six Paramata practices, what is we developing? What, what is happening when we practice that? Of course, we all know it is bring the realization, understand, and deepen our practices, deepen our understanding, knowledge, and wisdoms. But also in the teaching mentioned, the, in this, I mean, that is true, that is. But in the teaching mentioned, it was increasing the true merits. True merits. We often heard true merits. Those true merits are accumulation merit, wisdom merits. That is what. That is what is the accumulation merit and wisdom merits. So now this six paramata practicing it will bring them or increase in the true merits. Accumulation merit and wisdom merit. What is accumulation merit? Accumulation merit is in the, in the teaching, in the Tibetan world, Nam Ki So Na Ki So. Nam Ki So Na Ki So. The merit is something that you can perceive. You can function something to the mental status or physically verbal. That is Nam Ki So Nam Ki So. That is merit. Accumulation merit. Wisdom merit is something that you cannot perceive tangible ways. It's like beyond the conceptions, beyond the wording, beyond the labels. But yet you will experience with your own pristine cognition awareness. That is Western merits. So these six paramatas, first two, generous practices and morality practices is the principal cause and the condition to activating the accumulation merits. Accumulation merits. Last one, Last one, wisdom Panja Paramata or wisdom Paramata is then the wisdom merits. Well, how do you interpret this? Mumi Yishije Tso. The merit that we cannot be, be which, which cannot be focused, or we cannot, I mean, or we cannot uh, hold. The beyond the conceptions. That merit is wisdom. What are all other threes? They are in the teaching said all those are the support to both merits. What that all means now? That means patient. That means joyful effort. That means concentration. Those all three going support to increasing or activating the increasing of the two merits. When two merits are increasing, and if I use terminology merit, maybe as the energy or vitality of the inner strength, when it's developing, what we purify, what we clean it. At the same time as it comes, as it grows, we cleanse two obscurations. Emotion obscurations, knowledge obscurations, we purify according, we purify. So therefore, these six paramata practices so, so, so special and powerful that encompasses entire practice of the Sutra Mahayana and Vedayana Mahayana's teachings. It is really powerful and it is Based upon, as I said already many times, based upon this, the pole boundless. All 
whole boundless and with yesterday which start talking about the, the equality to me and others are more important than the one's own self. That principle, that compassion, that kindness, that willingness is based upon all that that teach that that principles. Therefore, it is so powerful, so special, specials. It is so authentic, and it is so organic. There is no condensation of self-importance and self-centered minds. Therefore, it will defeat all negativities. It will defeat the ego clingings. We bring the true realization of the egoless status, egoless status, and we will bring true realization of everything as a great emptiness, emptiness and appearance. Union of the great emptiness. The, the, what's called in the teachings the individually egoless status and a phenomenal egolessness status. Truly, it will bring that realization. How we developing that? In the course of that true egolessness realization or that intellectual theory is generally developing through the learning, from the, receiving the teaching and contemplate on that, then. In the teaching said it will bring that kind of glimpse of the theory or idea. It really will bring that realization. And then that also kind of as the Buddha said, as the Nagarjunas and all those great masters said, and you put also your intelligence and you have, and then you see all these phenomena existence are ah, as translucent states or as magic. There's no such substantially solid existing one one particles all is lucid all is just a completely combination and there is nothing that you can find one solid existence anywhere in this world and beyond the world or anywhere in the subject level in the object level when you have said that theory, that realization, that according to Buddhism, that is a perfect theory. Perfect is line of the true exile. What is not perfect? Clinging as solid, solid. Clinging on a, such existing, solid existing. That is just a mental clinging. Reality, there is nothing is existence. It's all as quantum physics are exploring or explore. That's the way. But in the Buddha teaching, I think it's going even further more steps than the quantum physics. There's nothing existing both subject level and object levels. Same way. But yet, all is arising. Why? It's a circumstance, a combination of the cause and the conditions arising magically and functioning magically in a magic world or functioning as a dream world as, as it is part of the dreams even though it is not existing solids and our notion is always believing kind of always holding something that even though it is really not existing for example well now what is the month now it is May this is May we think May is kind of truly existing but where is May? The day one we start in May until the end of the May. Where is that May? May, if you start thinking of that, each particle of the times or the moments is chain of the moments. Even moment there is nothing existing solid according to Buddhism. It's just a conceptually nominated that change. Then hold on to that. And that is a, our samsara duality mind clinging to everything like that. Everything clinging, even though it's not existing. Since it's not existing, it's an illusion display, therefore it's changing, rapidly changing. One after another is changing. 
not changing on the duration level is changing, but instantly level changing according to the teaching. Even though maybe we don't, maybe we don't detect that, we never no notice that, but reality is changing every second. Moving from where to where is from that display of the illusions, from the emptiness, moving in the emptiness, going to the emptiness, is all show of the great, the openness or emptiness and vastness. Therefore, what in the teaching said, or as I, I said, the second nobility without focus, without grasping. All this, our meditation, visualization is also magic. There's nothing to hold, nothing to grasp it. But as we follow this magic, where things, we are suffering with the magic, magic suffering bombs. In a way, magic of the ocean. Ocean. And it serves the purpose to the magic beings. It do works. That is a system of known as interdependent coordination systems. So therefore, everything is like that state. So as we practice the six paramata, then it increases that understanding, realization. When you re when we reach the according to the teaching, when we reach to the first booming, that time, then your realization will come exactly as you meditate. And as I said earlier, in the first part, we will understand theoretically. Accumulation part, this realization comes as theory, as kind of intellectual theories. But then in the second part, the application part, it will come as kind of more experience. Now getting a little bit more sense. And then in the third booming, or third part, seeing part, you're going to see the exactly as it is true nature. When you see this true nature, it's not going to change anything except the perspective of the perspective of the knowledge. And our grasping is shifted. Or it is come dis kind of disappearing. But there and otherwise everything is going to function. Exactly the same thing what the, with this time, even better. More fancy, more sophisticated, more stronger, more deeper, more effective force. You know the mysteries of the way the nature is. Again, and then you begin to really see them. You can play the dynamic display of these. And there were those great masters sitting on the sky, walking through the walls, walls, transforming fire into the water, water into the fire. Those are those like truths, kind of like stories, those are like true stories. It's not. It really can happen. When you, can, when, no, when you have the power over the mind, and then it comes in power over the matters. Mm -hmm. Matters. It changes. Shipping things. That's the true evidence. Even, for example, the material power, how much change by the scientists, scientists, how much change. When you power, power becomes our mind. When you power over the, our own mind, or oh, according to the teaching, it really will become, you, you will become the master of the materials. Masters. Therefore, ancient time in the teaching said in the many great masters, one change to the many, many change to the ones. And in, also in Christianity story, that Jesus Christ said, transform one bread, one lot of bread, so many breads, one bowl of the beer made so many, feed so many beings. That is true. When you become the power of the materials, you change. Nature is open. Nature is flexible. We see how things happen even in the material world by the scientists. That is shows the glimpse of the window of the mystery of the nature's beauty and their openness and their flexible states. So therefore, this practice, of the Sikh Paramatha practice, will bring realization and it defeated all the obstacles.
bring joy and peace, happiness to every living being without any discrimination. That is the beauty of the bodhicitta and the bodhicitta activities. Now I go back to the, again to the six paramatas a little bit and continue to go over this. this. Now these six paramatas generally in, in a teaching sense, this, six, this order of the six paramatas first is the generosity, then the morality, then the patient, then the joyful effort, then the concentration, then the wisdom. Why in these orders? Because if this order because the first is easier than the second. Second is more easy than the third. Third is more easy than the fourth. Fourth is more easy than the fifth. Fifth is then the final ones. That. So therefore, generosity is easy. Everybody can do some duty. Generosity. But morality is difficult. Very difficult to compare it with the generosity. Not. And then morality is a little more easy than the patience. <laughs> patience is difficult. Difficult. But when the then joyful effort is again a little more difficult than the patience to keep continuing. Maybe we can do one patient one time, two times, three times. But joyful effort means continuations. That is quite difficult then. Then the concentration. It's difficult. Even if everything is perfect and beautiful, nice and that, but it's risky. We can see ourselves too. Our mind is not stable. No matter whatever we do, really restless, always. Even if everything is quiet and peaceful, this monkey mind thinks something and may be distracted. And therefore, again, is so the wisdom is more that more uh, more difficult or more finer than the Concentrate. So therefore, it is completely kind of, that's what Buddha meant, that order, the force. So according to the teacher teaching of Buddha Shakyamuni, his teachings are according to the capabilities of that. Capability, the individualist, he showed the path. Never forced. And never to, but skillfully leading to the path, to the ultimate goal of the realization, as we can apply. And so, that, with that understanding, and that six paramatas are lined up in that six, six levels. And that is my brief talk about reaching, uh, actualizing both each other, and then again, we go a little more, more, and then continually, uh, for the time, <laughs> so we're talking, I'm talking, you're talking always, says, maybe you all a little bit, kind of feel why it's talking all the time, Bodhicitta and wishing Bodhicitta and actualizing Bodhicitta. Those are kind of going almost like exactly going in the like, uh, what's called the like in, in, in the Midwest and Texas and all those things. There is no synergies and no, there is just a continually going same thing, kind of like <laughs> same, almost the same thing. Just a, you see the horizon, you see the flat land, but there's nothing really happening. Maybe you're thinking that, but I think they're touching to the really core of the, the best of the teaching of the Buddha Shakyamuni. And that's how we, we're really developing it. And we're doing that according to our capabilities. Our capabilities, following the light of the great teacher Buddha Shakyamuni, his own is Dalai Lama, all the other great masters. So we are really activating our this healing retreat as a nicely building up the, from the best. And then gradually, then we go to the very other teaching, and then the teaching mentioned that too. So, so okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now with the short meditation.